as I greet you with assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh from my home here in Kumbak in Kuala Lumpur uh, and as I seek to address you on the subject the very important subject of Russia, Syria and Akhiru Zaman which is a part of the lecture that I could not deliver when I was cut short in my last lecture on the Zionist attack on Syria. Uh, that lecture on the Zionist attack on Syria has provoked such a sorry response from so many who have chosen to comment on YouTube to the lecture. Some of the comments frivolous, some of the comments vulgar, and some of the comments otherwise sinful uh, that I have been forced to now take certain steps in order to restore conformity uh, or an effort to restore conformity with the norm given in the Quran where Allah says بَعْلَوْزِ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ كُولُ لِلنَّاسِ خُسْنَ When you speak, when you write, when you address, when you comment, do so in a manner which is becoming. And كُولُ كَوْلًا sadida. When you speak, do so in a straightforward way, uh, not hiding behind pseudonyms and so on. There are many ways in which we can approach the subject of the Zionist attack on Syria. In my last lecture, I attempted to examine the validity of the view that a jihad is being waged in Syria. And I used the verses of the Quran to establish that you cannot wage a jihad with assistance from the enemies of Islam, with assistance from those from whom you are prohibited by the Quran from accepting assistance. I use Surah Al-Ma'idah, verse number 51, to point out that the Judeo-Christian alliance, which today is the Zionist Judeo-Christian alliance, which has NATO as its military arm, and Saudi Arabia, and Qatar, and Libya, and Turkey, as able and willing and enthusiastic members of that uh, supporting and that NATO alliance clients of uh, the Zionist Judeo-Christian Alliance are actively supporting and funding and training people who are going into Syria to wage that so-called jihad. You should not be angry with me. No, when I point out that this cannot be a valid jihad, when support is coming from these people, weapons are coming from these people, financing is coming from the US Congress, openly from France from Britain openly they're doing it openly and if you accept that support and that help and those weapons and so on you cannot be waging a valid jihad don't be angry with me this is facts these are facts that I mentioned but then there are those who say we are not at all in any way connected with these uh, Zionists Saudi Zionists and Qatar Zionists and Libyan Zionists and uh, Turkey's uh, NATO ally, uh, Turkey the NATO ally. We do not accept weapons from them. We do not accept money from them. We do not accept any help from them. Well, I want to suggest to you that a valid jihad cannot be waged alongside an invalid jihad being waged actually by the enemies of Islam. That's not possible. No thinking Muslim will attempt to wage a valid jihad alongside an invalid jihad. What will happen is that as soon as those who have the upper hand in power, and the Quran tells us it's Gog and Magog, they're the ones who control power in the world today. This is my eschatology. If you defer with me and you hold to the view <laughs> that Gog and Magog have not been released and they're not the ones who control power in the world today, 
then could you kindly do something? And I'm speaking respectfully, not in any way derogatively. Would you kindly at least show some integrity by going and searching for the barrier built by Zolkar Lane, which is built of iron and blocks of iron, coated with copper, and which should still be standing somewhere in the world today, high up in the sky, between mountains, if Gog and Magog have not been really Don't come with this frivolous nonsense, and I make no excuse for that language. The, the, ba the barrier is somewhere underneath the earth. That's Disneyland. <laughs> the eschatology. So a, a valid jihad cannot be waged alongside an invalid jihad. And when those who today are waging the so-called jihad in Syria with money from Saudi Arabia and Qatar and weapons and men from Libya and from Turkey and so on, when they gain the upper hand, and if, God forbid, they were to succeed and they were to bring down the regime of uh, the Syrian regime, the first thing that they will do, my brothers, is to hunt you down. Those of you who are sincerely struggling to struggle in the way of Allah without in any way being associated with the enemies of Islam, you're going to be hunted down like rabbits and they will ensure that you are either eliminated or driven out. So before that day should happen, you should understand from an eschatological viewpoint and a theological viewpoint that not only you do, do you not wage a valid jihad alongside an invalid jihad, but secondly, there is no way that those who are the people of Gog and Magog will not overcome those who are opposed to them in the long run until Nabi Isa Islam returns and they are destroyed. They will always have the upper hand because they are people created by Allah with power so powerful that none but Allah can destroy them. This is Sahih Muslim. And so for your own sake I urge you not to seek to wage any valid jihad alongside any invalid jihad anywhere on the face of the earth and protect yourselves for tomorrow they're going to come after you like rabbits. Israel wants to rule the world and the recent uh, Israeli apology to Turkey sends a message which I mentioned in my last lecture that they are now ready to provoke what will eventually become the third world war or what will eventually become what Nabi Muhammad described as the Malhama. There will be Malahim ending with the Malhama, Al-Kubra. I said that it is likely to be a Turkish attack on Syria. NATO therefore attacking Syria because Turkey is a NATO member. And what they're doing is actually baiting Russia. There are other aspects to the analysis. They have wanted to install a militantly Islamic regime in Syria, a, a Salafi regime in Syria that would spit blood and fire against Israel in such a way that Israel can use CNN and Al Jazeera to portray to the world that Israel is now in mortal danger and therefore get uh, causes bellum, a justification for waging the big wars against the Arabs that have been pre-planned. But you know about this analysis of mine. I made this analysis in Sydney, how long was it, 2000 and... So they have finessed this methodology of how to bring the masses out onto the streets. And this is what is about to occur. As the masses go out onto the streets, the ones who are going to be targeted are the pro-American regimes in the Arab world. The objective? To get one or more of these regimes to fall through massive demonstrations, anti-American and anti-Israeli demonstrations. So in addition to that, what they're doing is baiting 
Russia. And today, if I may be able to do so, and if my words can reach to Moscow, today we from the world of Islam, about whom the Prophet has said to us that we will make an alliance with Rome, we send a message to Rome. They are prob they're, they're probably going to bait Russia with a, an attempt to slaughter the Christians of Syria. In the same way that uh, one sheikh, an elderly 84-year-old man, was shamefully, shamefully, shamefully assassinated with some 49 other people in a masjid while giving a khutbah shamefully on you, shamefully. If in your heart there is no regret, if in their heart there is no pain and, and anger against those who committed this act against that elderly sheikh who was a learned scholar of Islam, I say to you, wait until you go in your grave and then you will learn to your surprise that you have no iman at all, none, not even the weakest of all. Because if you had even the weakest amount of Iman, you detest it in your heart. And so, attacks on the Christians of Syria, we can be expected. Who are these Christians? We know that there are two kinds of Christians in the world. There was Rome, and when Allah sent down the verse of the Quran, Ghulibati Rome, He was referring to Constantinople, to the Byzantine, Eastern Christian Empire. But then, I think it may have been about a hundred years or so after the Quran came down, that there was a split, a schism, and part of that empire, part of that Christian world broke away and went and formed their headquarters in the Italian city of Rome, from where Rome had emerged in the first place to move to Constantinople. And then came the Roman Catholic Church. And so you have Western Christians and Eastern Christians. It is the Eastern Christians that Allah is referring to, the ones who remain in Constantinople, when he spoke about Rome. And Nabi Muhammad Islam, said that we will make an alliance with Rome. These are the people, and I know that our Turkish brothers and sisters are becoming increasingly angry with me, when I point out that the Ottoman Empire was consistently at war with Rome, particularly with Russia. You have to prove to me that in every instance that the Ottomans took up arms against Rome, they were doing so in a manner which conformed with the Sharia of Islam, which prohibits offensive warfare, prohibits aggression, prohibits the use of jihad to expand the territory. Not at all, not in Islam. We never fight except in response to aggression or to remove oppression. We never, never, never fight unless it be in response to aggression or to remove oppression. And there's a methodology for the removal of oppression, but we don't have the time to discuss that today. And so Rome is Russia today. And we're going to make an alliance with Rome, said the Prophet Yes, I know that the Hadith goes on to say many other things, but it does say, you cannot deny it, that we are going to make an alliance with Rome, and Rome is Russia. If Rome is not Russia, her to Burhanakum. Come on, bring your proofs. And let us argue the question in a very civilized way, in a scholarly way. Rome is in the Quran, and therefore it is from the Quran that we must first derive our definition of Rome. And Rome in the Quran is Constantinople, and Constantinople has moved to Russia.